Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be making fiestadas, which was this, it's like a, a little Mexican pizza thing that they used to have in school lunches. We had them when I was in middle school and I never got lunch at, in middle school, but on Thursdays they would have fiestadas and that was the only time I would get anything from the, the cafeteria because they had these, and ours were sort of a triangular shape. I found out that fiestada is actually a trademark in Mexico for a, a pizza, a little pizza thing that they make down there. I didn't know that. I didn't know where the, I didn't know where the term fiest, what the term fiestada, what, you know, the origins of that, but apparently it's a trademark in Mexico for a little pizza thing. So I have a recipe here that I found online for Mexican fiestada for school lunch. And it looks really super simple, like anybody could do this. It takes just a few basic ingredients. You need a package of dry taco seasoning mix. This is my favorite, uh, Old El Paso taco seasoning mix with less sodium. I like it. I find the regular uh, seasoning is just a little too salty. But this one has, it's, it has less salt in it. I'm going to go ahead and actually double this recipe because I wasn't sure what kind of uh, dough to get for this recipe. Um, so I got two kinds. So you need the dry taco seasoning mix. You need a cup of ground beef. So I have my lean ground beef here from Aldi. This is the kind that I get for basically everything that I need ground beef for. You need a package, a 14 ounce package of prepared pizza dough or as needed. So when it said you needed a package of pizza dough, I wasn't sure if they meant this kind or this kind here, like, like this sort. So I got these, there are actually two crusts in here. So I'm just gonna take one of these and we're gonna double the recipe and we will put some in, put some of it on this too. This is, these are thin crust pizza crusts from Great Value. Actually, after looking at the recipe though, I kind of realized I think they meant the, um, the refrigerated pizza crust like this one. Um, this is Pillsbury and it is a thin crust according to the little part here. So I'm pretty sure this is the kind they mean, but I didn't have, I didn't have the recipe with me when I was at the store and I just remembered it said you need some pizza crust stuff. So we're, I'm going to be doubling the recipe. So you also need um, a half a cup of pizza sauce. I got this cute little jar of great value pizza sauce. Um, I don't think I've ever, I've never tried this kind. Um, but I, I really loved the, the fiestadas at school. So I was so excited when I could finally kind of replicate that. You also need um, a quarter teaspoon of cumin a pinch of salt, and one and a quarter cups of shredded mild cheddar cheese. Which is great because I just happen to have this big bag of cheese that I got at Aldi that I needed for something. And I ended up with a whole bunch of it left. I didn't really know what to do with it. So this is perfect because I'm probably going to use up most of this, especially since I'm doubling the recipe. So that's, that's really great. I'm really glad that I found this recipe when I did. So I wasn't sure what to do with that cheese. <laughs> so yeah, I was gonna, I'll tell you a little secret. I think the statute of limitations has run out on this. I don't think my mom can ground me for it anymore. When I was in middle school, I went to this really old middle school and the cafeteria was tiny, it was a little bitty and they didn't really have time to cycle all the students through there and have a lot of time for the kids to eat because they could only fit, you know, a certain number of us in there at a time. So we only got 20 minutes for lunch and that was, this was sixth grade through eighth grade. We only got 20 minutes for lunch and that included the time it took to get from your class to the cafeteria, go through the lunch line, eat, and then get to your next class. It was almost impossible to do. So I would have my lunch money every day. My mom would give me a dollar. She'd give me $5 on Monday and that was a dollar a day. And I was supposed to spend that 
on like actual food. But I found that when you go through the, the lunch line, you would have to basically inhale your food as soon as you sat down. And it was only worth it on Thursdays when they had fiestadas because they were so good. I loved them. Most days, I would go over to the snack counter. They had um, this, this guy that attended a snack counter and they had things like chips and, you know, Lance crackers, little packs of nabs and little brownies and stuff like that. And then they had a separate place where you could get drinks. They had cups of Kool-Aid and um, for a dollar. Now, this was back in the mid 80s, of course. For a dollar, I could get like a pack of cheese crackers or peanut butter crackers and a little brownie and a cup of Kool-Aid and still have a little bit of money left over for my dollar. And I could get through those lines very quickly and have time to actually eat what I got. So for three years, for lunch in school, I basically lived on either potato chips or pretzels and a brownie and a cup of grape Kool-Aid. <laughs> so I, I imagine my mom would not be too happy with me if she knew that, but that was a long time ago. That was 35 years ago, roughly. So I, th I think I'm good. Okay, the first step for this process is we are going to take, I'm gonna go ahead and just brown this entire package of ground beef and I'm going to add to that my I'm going to add two packets of this because it sounds like for the original recipe you're only supposed to do one cup of ground beef and one packet of dry seasoning so it seems like a lot to me but I'm going to go ahead and do two packets in here to kind of follow the recipe because I know that's way more than two that's more than a cup of ground beef I'm going to go ahead and brown it, add this to it, and then we'll go from there. So let's brown some ground beef. I've placed the ground beef here in the pan. My hands are clean. <laughs> I've cut open my two packets of seasoning mix. Um, let's set those down for a minute. I'm just going to kind of cut this up a little bit. It will be nice to be able to have this dish without having to eat it very quickly so I'm not late to my next class. I also found a recipe for um, school cafeteria yeast rolls and I do plan to make that at some point too. In middle school they had the best yeast rolls. In my high school they didn't have them. They also didn't have fiestadas there either, but they had these yeast rolls. Oh, they were so good. And sometimes they would either make too many or have a bunch left over and they would wheel out this little stainless steel cart and it would just be piled up with these yeast rolls and they would say, you know, y'all come get it. You can have these. And children would just descend upon that cart like, like ravenous beasts and eat all the rolls and they were so good. Right, we're going to sort of gonna sprinkle this about. Okay, and I'm going to stir this up. I always end up getting a, at least a little bit of it on the stove top.
and it's starting to sizzle a little bit. Now we're going to cook this all the way through. Smells really good. All right, now I'm going to drain this and I'm going to remove the, you know, the grease and everything from it. And then we'll move on to mixing the other ingredients for our fiestata. Our next step is to take our refrigerated pizza crust here. And we're going to divide it in half and place it on this baking sheet. It didn't say you have to grease it or anything. We're just going to divide it in half, place it on here. Here we have our dough, and you have to find where it separates. It's basically like, you know, the crescent rolls that they make. You just have to kind of find the seam. Okay. I should have turned it this way. It's very stretchy. I'm just going to basically, this, this is going to be pretty big. I'm going to just cut this in half with a, I'm just going to use a little pizza cutter. And my little OXO pizza cutter. Okay. 
I'm not really worried about it being perfect. It's okay. <laughs> All right. And the fiestatas we had at our school, I know most of the, most people talk about them being hexagonal. Ours must have been like a cheap knockoff because they were shaped. They were rectangular. They weren't this big, but they were rectangular. And then we they also had like regular school lunch pizzas that were the same shape and size. So it was probably made by the same company. Okay. So we're going to set this aside for a moment. This is our first our first crust. I could tuck that in a little bit, I suppose. I don't know. Oh, it's whatever. Okay, and now I'm going to get out the other crust. Okay. And this is our trusty family pizza pan. Many, many pizzas have been baked on this pan. And then again, I have these... Um, ready to bake crusts from great value and it says on here that it needs to be baked for 8 to 12 minutes after you add your toppings now for the other crust we are going to place it in the oven for three minutes before we add the toppings according to the instructions so here we have this uh, great value crust now we're not going to bake that ahead of time but according to the instructions I'm going to pop this one in the oven on 450 degrees Fahrenheit for three minutes and then it will be ready for its toppings okay this is how the dough looks after three minutes in the oven at 450 degrees doesn't really look all that different but it is now ready for toppings it's ready for sauce and stuff this is great this one, of course, we don't really have to do anything to that one yet. So the next step is to add, we're going to take the cumin, which again, I have doubled everything, pizza sauce, and salt here, and we're going to combine all of these things together. I never get to show off my rooster bowls. I have two of these. I found them at a church yard sale several years ago. My mother had one of these bowls when I was a kid, and I hadn't I hadn't seen one in years, and I stumbled across two at a yard at church yard sale. And one thing I remember about it, this pattern right here, it was just like the handles of some of the uh, silverware we had. It had little handles that kind of had a design like that on the handle, and it made me think of this bowl. When I was little, I thought the bowl was made to match the uh, silverware, but no. I don't know who made it. There's nothing on it, but yeah, I remember these little rooster bowls. We're going to use this today to mix these things together. So the recipe calls for a half a cup of pizza, pizza sauce, but since we're doubling it, I have a cup here. A cup of that. And our cumin here. It calls for a quarter teaspoon, so we're doubling it for a half. And it calls for a pinch of salt, so I have two pinches of salt. Right there. And we'll just mix this together in our little rooster bowl. I never get to use these. Don't really have much use for them every day, you know, like everyday use. This pizza sauce, I haven't tried it yet, but I have to say it smells really good. It was only a dollar for this jar of pizza sauce from Walmart. Okay, so we're kind of mixing that together, and we don't add anything else to it at this point. It's just right here. This is going to be our sauce for our little pizzas, and see what we're going to do. We add this first, and then we do the ground beef and the cheese. Let's start with this one. And I have leftover sauce. So if I don't have enough, I have I can always add more. And I guess you could put on the, the sauce as thin or as thick as you like. That is totally up to you. I 
We'll set this one aside and get the other crusts out. I might need to mix up a little bit more of this. I'm going to mix up a little bit more because I don't really have enough. I think these pizza crusts may be a little bit larger than what I needed. I'm not really happy with that amount of pizza sauce. I'm going to go grab some more ingredients and we'll mix up a little bit more. Okay, I have a half a cup of pizza sauce, a quarter teaspoon of cumin, right there. and my pinch of salt. And we'll mix, we'll mix it again. I don't like dry pizza, so I'll, I like the sauce to be nice. A nice sauce to crust ratio is good. I bet this will be the perfect Funny how everybody kind of has their own little way of doing things. Whenever my mom would make a pizza like this, she had this ladle that she would, she would just kind of ladle the sauce on there and she'd put a whole bunch on there and use the ladle to spread it out. I've seen people do it with a basting brush or butter knife. I don't know. I don't think it matters as long as you get it to where it's supposed to go. I don't really care. Okay. A little bit more up there. Now we are going to cover it with our ground beef here, and we have our cheese too. Um, I don't think it really matters what order you do it in. Just kind of break up the ground beef. You want it to be small pieces. I'm just going to kind of drop it on there, just wherever. I have a little bit more of this too if I need it. I'm just trying to distribute it right now. Okay. It's supposed to just be sort of dropped on there. I guess I should have just literally dropped it on there with my hands because now it's mixing with the sauce. My lunch ladies would be very disappointed in me. <laughs> but yeah, the fiestadas at my middle school were definitely worth going through the line for. <laughs> I went ahead and just put the rest of it in here. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, I'm not a big fan of handling stuff like this with my hands, but I'm gonna do it just to 
kind of spread it a little bit more evenly. It's very squishy. <laughs> okay. But I want to make sure I have enough for the other one too. So let me move this very carefully. Okay, let's go ahead and do it on this as well. wait to see what this tastes like. I just wonder if it's going to be the same as what we had in school. I read somewhere that you can actually buy those things in the store, but I've never I've never seen them in a in a store, well not around here anywhere. Okay. Let's see. Bring this one back. A little bit more. Just get those, get a little bit up around the edges. They've been neglected. Okay. Well, I've already got, I have orange fingers. I'm just going to go ahead and do the cheese. I don't think it really matters at this point. to the other one too. It's like a sausage pizza. Right. I've got just a little dibble of cheese left. I'll bring this back one more time. Oh, look at our happy little pizzas. Oh, they're so cute. You hear that lunch bell ringing right now? It was really bad when I was in the sixth grade because you know, they had to cycle a lot of kids through this little cafeteria, and um, my class was one of the first to go, and we had to eat lunch at about 10.30 in the morning, and then I had a really long bus route, so I didn't get home in the afternoon until about at probably 4.15, so by the time I got home, I was starving. <laughs> oh, that was not fun. All right, so now what we do is we're going to bake this one at 450 degrees until the crusts are golden brown and the cheese is melted, 10 to 12 minutes. And I'm also gonna, I'm gonna bake this one separately because I'm gonna have to watch it I, because this crust is different so it may bake differently. I'm gonna go ahead and bake these and we'll come back and see how they do. All right, they are out of the oven. Ooh, they smell really good. They're nice and brown along the edges and the cheese is all melted. Look at this one. Ooh, I did bake this one separately. Um, this one actually took a little bit longer, but it looks delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut, I'm gonna just cut this with my little pizza cutter and then, uh, and then we, will, we will give these a try. I have now cut my fiestadas. I had to put them on a plate to do it. Now I have to say for this one, um, it stuck to the baking sheet really bad. It was extremely stuck and it got a little messed up when I was trying to remove it. Um, one half stuck a lot more than the other for some reason. So I would say if I were going to try it on the, the baking sheet again, I might put a little bit of nonstick cooking spray or something under it just a little bit because it really did stick, although the recipe didn't say to put anything 
I didn't say you had needed to grease the, the baking sheet. The, uh, the great value crust did not stick to the pan at all. And it's so pretty. I just cut it like a regular pizza. Um, the fiestadas, again, like I was saying, at my school, they must have been like knockoffs or something because they were rectangular. Most other people that I've talked to about fiestadas said that theirs were a hexagonal shape. I don't think ours ever were. I think they were all rectangular, just like this, the regular school pizzas. They were probably made by the same people. But we're gonna try these. Um, first, I'm going to try the one, the refrigerated pizza dough. It's uh, it's very floppy. Um, but I remember the fiestadas at school were kind of floppy like that. They were, the crust was a little thicker though for the school pizzas. I might have spread this one out a little bit too thin. Um, that might have that might have been my my mistake. But we'll try it. Oh, it's very salty. The first thing that hits me is the salt. Like, it's extremely salty. If I were to make it again, I would leave the salt out. And maybe use a little bit less taco seasoning. Um, the crust is not right. The crust is not... The crust needs to be a little bit thicker to be like the ones we had at school. Um, it's not, I mean, it's not bad. The crush is not quite right. I think I put a little bit too much taco seasoning in it. And it's very salty. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's too salty. Yeah, And, um, I still have half of it stuck to my baking sheet, and I'm going to have to figure out how to get it, get it off there. I hope it didn't ruin my baking sheet. I've had it for years. Um, it, it was really, the set that one half of it was, like, super stuck to the thing. I'll have to soak it off or something. I don't know, but the thing is, with that baking sheet, because of the way it's made, you're not supposed to submerge it in water. You have to just kind of clean the surface, so I can't I can't soak it, you know. But I'll figure something out. Okay. Now we do have the second one here. Now the crust on this one again. This was the great value crust that came in the little the little pack. The crust on this one actually looks a little bit more like what I remember. It smells it smells like the fiestadas they had at school. It really does. It has the same smell. That's it, except for the saltiness. This crust is perfect. This crust is absolutely perfect. That's exactly how I remember it tasting. Oh, I'm definitely gonna make this again. But I would absolutely not use as much salt. I would completely eliminate the salt from the recipe. I would definitely go with a lower sodium taco seasoning mix and maybe not use quite as much, maybe use, um. I, maybe a half of a, a half as half, half as much as they say, or three quarters. I don't know that I would use as much as they would say. I think it's a little bit too much. So yeah, um, this crust is perfect. So I found this crust on the aisle with pot, uh, pasta and pizza making stuff at Walmart. And it was the great value thin crust. You get two in the pack. This crust is absolutely perfect. And um, it's a lot, I think it's easier to work with than the refrigerated pizza crust. It's really good. This And it's perfect for this fiestata. It's exactly like the crust on the fiestatas that we had in school. It's, I can get this perfect next time. No salt added. Maybe a little bit less taco seasoning. But this is it. This is it. Mmm. And it's not floppy. See, when you pick up the other one, look, look how floppy it is. Because you have the weight of the toppings on here, and it's just very floppy. This one, this one is a lot easier to hold and eat. 
Mm, yeah, but oh, I used to love Thursdays when I was in middle school for the fiestadas. So I am so glad that I found this recipe and it's super easy. It's not a lot of ingredients. It's very simple. I mean, anybody can make this, but there's nothing to it. But for me personally, to be like the ones that I had in school, I would recommend that you go with the, you know, not the, the refrigerated pizza crust that comes in the tube, you know, like the crescent rolls. I would recommend these crusts that you get where all the pizza sauce and stuff is in the store. I think this crust is a lot closer to the original thing I had in school. Mmm. It's so good. So yeah, this was great. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. I really hope you enjoyed getting to make fiestadas today, just like we had in school. I really did. I, this was this was a real trip down memory lane. I haven't even thought about those things in years, so it was kind of nice to get that to get that flavor again to get to make something similar to that. And I definitely think next time I'm making, I'm going to modify the recipe a little bit. But I really enjoyed it. It was awesome. Thank you so much for being here. I really hope that you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again soon.